What's up everybody? Hope you guys are having an all right day. There is a lot that we need to talk about, so let's do this, shall we? Now, with everything happening currently, a lot of celebrities are speaking up about racism. You know, celebrities are going out uh, from donating to worthy causes to marching and protests and making their voices be heard. However, with this latest video entitled I Take Responsibility, which features 14 white actors and actresses, it's making a lot of people cringe. And I'm one of those people who finds it a little bit cringy. I mean, check it out. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for every unchecked moment for every time it was easier to ignore than to call it out for what it was. Every not so funny joke. Every unfair stereotype. Every blatant injustice, no matter how big or small. Every time I remained silent. Every time I explained away police brutality. Or turned a blind eye. I take responsibility. Black people are being slaughtered in the streets, killed in their own homes. These are our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family. We are done watching them die. We are no longer bystanders. We will not be idle. Enough is enough. I will no longer allow an unchecked moment. I will no longer allow racist, hurtful words, jokes, stereotypes, no matter how big or small, to be uttered in my presence. Now, if you know you're a moviegoer or something like that if you see something in black and white then you know something is about to go down and you know this video ends with them saying you know calls to action and it has a link about you know i take responsibility now this is a new organization that is partnering up with naacp to get white people to recognize their own harmful actions and take a stand against them now when it was posted a lot of people had mixed feelings about this like someone went on twitter and they asked what are they auditioning for and in response someone said ended racism the musical wow just wow but you know there was so much about that it was like really really cringy in my honest opinion watching this video and everything like so many people made jokes about it uh some people compared it to other commercials if you remember the kendall jenner uh commercial when she went up to the police with a pepsi yeah uh, many people felt that the celebrities were focusing less on themselves you know and more on, on uh, donating and many were upset by seeing some of their favorite celebrities involved in this as well and people just continued on like mo like mocking everything along the way they even mocked aaron paul for his performance in it as well you know they they thought it was like he's trying to get an uh it was an oscar i believe or something and it's just watching this video it was just so cringy and i'm just like Ugh. but i i get i get where they're coming from but at the same time and you know a, a, it's a lot going on with that you know you know it was just as cringy as watching nancy Pelosi along with democrats wearing kente clothes and i'm just going you you're going a little bit overboard aren't you and everything else on the way and you know it almost felt like jordan peele who who wrote who did the movie get out he also responded to a meme that showed the parents wearing kunta Kent, like kente clothing and everything else on the way so just watching that it was just it was just a lot you know for me but what are you guys thoughts about if you watched this video? What are your thoughts about watching that video? Did you feel cringy? Did you understand where it's coming from? And so much more with that. Now, this next story I want to talk about, it's in Seattle and what they did with certain area. It's kind of cool, but at the same time you go, hmm. So in Seattle on the streets uh, that's next to a police station in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood, protesters and officers spent a week locally in a night cycle of standoffs and certain times there's tear gas and a lot of violence going on as well however 
after a growing backlash over its disreputable tactics in, you know, the aftermath of George Floyd's death in Minneapolis, the Seattle Police Department, they offered a week of concession. They offered that they would abandon their building, uh, board up the build the windows and let the protesters be free, have free reign outside of this area. So basically in the neighborhood where they are at, at Capitol Hill, like the streets of Capitol Hill and everything in Seattle, they blocked it off with barricades and they lay claim to it on several blocks and it's known as Capitol Hill uh, Aut Autonomous Zone or in a way called a free zone. Now, hundreds of people gathered there to hear speeches, poetry and music and everything along the way. On one night, on Tuesday, they, you know, dozen people came out there to watch the movie 13th by Adi Duverin. Uh, and it's about, basically about the criminal justice system impact on African Americans. And on you know Wednesday, they had children coming out there to do chalk drawings and the street and everything along the way. Now you're probably wondering what is happening in this area. Well, in this area, a lot is going down. You know, people are able to come out there and get a free drink and you know, or you know, water, snack, that kind of thing. There is no currency that's accepted. But, you know, outside the, bar the barrier or, you know, barricades and everything across the street uh, and a nod of capitalism, you know, there is a person out there selling hot dogs for $6. And that's a lot, you know. Well, I've been in New York, so, you know, I've seen some, I've, those prices are crazy. But in this, you know, a lot is happening. You know, people are able to walk around they're actually able to express their voices and everything in some way and it's actually a good thing you know um the homeless are actually able to come out there and get the food that they need and you know they can get some toiletries that they need to as well and so much more along with that now wednesday trump you know how trump is he the moment he gets his phone he likes to go on twitter and everything is on the way and he said that it was domestic terrorists uh have taken over seattle and he continued on by telling the mayor, uh, Jenny Durkin, uh, Governor Jay Inslee, uh, to take back their city. And the mayor, Durkin, she responded, she clapped back, you know, uh, by saying to Trump to make us all safe and to go back to your board, your bunker, because basically he has been doing that. He has been going to his bunker and, you know, whining and everything else on the way. Now, the chief of police in Seattle, uh, Carmen Best, she said in a video message on Thursday that she said that the decision to leave the police station wasn't hers or, you know, that she wasn't angry about how it deployed, I mean, developed or anything else on the way. But she also shared without evidence that, you know, she feels concerns about the, you know, the area and everything else on the way. And, you know, with businesses uh, being asked to pay money and, ex you know, exchange for protection, and everything else on the way. And, you know, with all this happening, you're probably wondering, is it still safe? Is it still good out there? Yes, no, maybe so, who knows, and everything along the way. Now, the demonstrators have been out there trying to figure out what they all need and everything. And a list of demands was posted on, you know, prominently on one of the walls, and they asked for a few things. One, they asked to defund the police department. Two, they asked to fund community health and three, they asked to drop all criminal charges against prosecutors. I mean, sorry, not prosecutors, protesters. And um, I, you know, with the protests, you know, it, I do agree. These protesters are being peaceful out there and there should be no criminal charges on them because, you know, it can it can go it, it can go on with them for the rest of their life. And if they're trying to get a job and they see this, they go, oh, you know, we can't hire you, blah, blah, blah. But with this being said you know all things going around here you know i do understand with dropping the criminal charges against the protesters you know funding community health it is really you know beneficial it can actually help out with the COVID 19. reminder COVID 19 is still happening so please make sure you're being safe out there make sure you're wearing a mask wherever you go wash your hands that kind of thing so i'm just letting you know uh with the whole defunding the police department, there are some perks with that as well. So, you know, there's just a lot going on. And if you live in Seattle and if you happen to, you know, walk in this neighborhood and everything along the way, what are you guys' thoughts about this? Have you guys chilled out there? Have you let your voices be heard? Uh, or, you know, just in general, what do you guys think about this? Do you think it's a good idea for them to do this? Do you think it's a bad idea or anything else along the way? Now, y'all know when I talk about Trump, it's just 
a lot, you know, is Trump. Trump is Trump. And, you know, he is doing so, so many stupid things. I should have a segment called, What Idiotic Thing Is Trump Doing This Time? And this one is, like, massive. Uh, basically, Trump is returning to campaign for the 2020 t- elections. By the way, have you registered to vote? Because if you have not registered, you need to because we need leaders who actually care about us. Okay? But he is re- he's returning to do his campaign for the 2020 election. And his first stop on his trail is Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, most people are like, okay, that's nothing to be wrong with. It's just the day that he is doing it. He is doing it on June 19th, or for us in the black community, we call it Juneteenth. So that's actually a massive idiotic thing, okay? Now, the selection of the place where Trump is doing this, he wants to return to a slump, and to a stump, and on the day of which he is choosing to both uh, talk about his long whispered about race speech, along with the wake of ongoing protests and the unrest following of the death of George Floyd. Boy. Now, history fact for everybody. Tulsa was the site of one of the most vicious acts of racial violence in American history uh, when in 1921, a group of white, sorry, not a group, a mob of white people attacked a section of the city known as Greenwood or Black Wall Street and murdered hundreds of African Americans. Now, if you have HBO, uh, you can actually, and you watch uh, The Watchmen, it's actually based on the HBO Watchmen series. And, you know, on June 19th, it is actually known as Juneteenth or Eman- Emancipation Day, uh, and it commemorates the anniversary of the reading of the General Orders of Number Three, which is to officially informed slaves that they were free for him to do this it's just so disrespectful on so many levels i just i get angry just talking about him at all now when asked about this his white house press secretary kaylee mckinney she had this to say about you know trump's plan on tulsa's rally for juneteenth Wait, what did juneteenth mean? Look, President Trump is, the African American community is very near and dear to his heart. Um, At these rallies, he often shares the great work he has done for minority communities. Um, When you look at the fact that this president got criminal justice reform done. Girl, if you don't get your, he cares about the black community. No, he does not. He does not care about the black community at all. If he cared about the black community, he would resign. How about that? Instead of having a... Uh, talking about his election on Juneteenth, a day of, you know, remembrance for us. Get get out of here, okay? That is downright disrespectful for y'all to even say, oh, no, he cares about us. No, he does not. And for everybody who says, oh, yeah, he does. No, he does not at all. Trust me. I follow the news. I watch a lot of things I hear from a lot of people, okay? But if I'm wrong, you can let me know in the comment section below. But what are your guys' thoughts about that? Do you actually think that Trump cares about the African-American community? Do you really think that he actually cares about us? Seriously, I just want to know. This story, this is actually really good to hear. And this is a great thing to hear. However, still, this needs to happen. Now, I've talked about this in most of the videos the past few, you know, past few days or so. Uh, I talked about Brianna Taylor and, you know, about the cops and everything. And I talked about what happened to her. If you don't know, you know, you should go back and watch my videos. You guys should go online, look it up and everything on the way. Well, recently, the Louisville Metro Council uh, voted unanimously, I believe is 26 to 0, on a ban of no-knock search warrants after the police shot and killed Miss Taylor in her home in March. Now, Mayor Greg Fisher, uh, a Louisville Uh, Kentucky. He said that he would sign Brianna's law after the city council, you know, city council members unanimously voted on this on Thursday evening to ban no knock warrants. Now, in accordance to this, there is a few other things as well. Uh, Police officers have to wear the body cams on when conducting a search and set a minimum time 
before and after the operation that the cameras must be active. Now, when Breonna Taylor was killed, they were in, you know, normal clothes and everything else on the way, and they didn't have any cameras on them. And, you know, it's truly upsetting to hear about this because on Wednesday, the police department, they released a four page incident report of the Miss Taylor's case, but it contained minimal details and enlisted on, you know, Miss Taylor saying that she was a victim, but she received none of injuries, you know, any victim injury as well. She was shot eight times and you decided to put none on there. That goes to show you how much, you know, they care about, you know, certain people. But hearing about this no knock warrant, you know, this this no knock uh, law for or Brianna's law is really good to hear. However, here's the thing. When ha when are y'all going to arrest the officers that did it? Because they are moseying their way on the streets probably right now as we speak. They're probably at their homes, relaxing with their families. If we can arrest the officers for George Floyd, which by the way, side note, I don't know how the hell this happened, but apparently Lane was released and he made bail. So that is something that's, that's weird. But you have not arrested the officers that killed Breonna Taylor yet. They are still out there and they are relaxing in life. Whereas, you know, Breonna Taylor is in a, she is six feet under. What are you doing towards this? This needs to be addressed point blank. This needs to be like instant. Okay. These officers killed Breonna Taylor and they arrested her boyfriend, which by the way, they were asleep when this happened. And you guys just decided to knock on the door, you know, at what? One thirty in the morning, this thinking that this was, this was somebody was going to answer. No, again, arrest the officers that were involved in Breonna Taylor's murder. And I know a lot of people agree, don't you? But with that being said, I know you guys, there is a lot still happening in this world, you know? People are still out there, you know, peaceful protesting and there's people still dealing with like racist comments and everything in some way. Um, you know, as a cosplayer, I, you know, cosplay characters who I love and everything along the way. And I recently talked about how I cosplayed a certain character from a hero, from a, an anime that I love. However, that person isn't, you know, black. And I got a lot of negative comments from that. And it hit me, you know, it hurt a lot too to even hear about this, but we are still dealing with racism. And people are saying, no, we're not, you know, people are saying there's no racism in cosplay. Trust me, there is racism in cosplay and there's racism everywhere, okay? But what are you guys thoughts about the Brianna's Law? What are you guys thoughts about what's going on in Seattle with their whole uh, free zone and everything along the way? What are you guys thoughts about what Trump is trying to do and everything along the way about the, you know, with him having his his campaign trail on in Juneteenth. If you watch that, I take responsibility video. What do you guys thoughts about that? Because again, it was cringy. Um, along with that, if you guys remember when I talked about, uh, Martin Grugingo, who was a 75 year old gentleman who was pushed by officers, an update on that. He is now dealing with brain injury and he's now going to start therapy. So what do you guys thoughts about that? You know, this, it's just a lot going on. What about what, what Starbucks is doing. They ban Black Lives Matter clothing on people. However, they're allowing LGBTQ people to wear their stuff and everything along the way. But then, surprise twist, they are now allowing people to wear their Black Lives Matter because of a lot of backlash and there's so much more. What are you guys thoughts about Lady Antebellum changing her name to Lady A? What do you guys think about The Bachelor now having its first black lady man? What about, you know, uh, the PS5 announcement, everything else on the way. So I, I, you know, when I saw that, I loved it. I love the whole Miles Morales expansion pack and everything for that. It's amazing, but there is a lot going on, people. You know, it's just, you know, there's a lot of 
bad going on, but there is also good going on. Like today, on June 12th, it is known as Happy Loving Day, and it is the anniversary of the 1967 U.S. Supreme Court decision between Loving versus Virginia, which struck down an all anti misgeneration gener uh which laws remain in 16 U.S. states. If you guys don't know about that, I will have the link down below about that. You know, basically, just a lot is happening, you know, and people, you got to let your voices be heard. If you see somebody doing something that they should not be doing, if you hear somebody saying something racist, call them out. Seriously, call them out. And, you know, don't don't just think, you know, you just, just going to leave them high. Just call, call them out and let them know that is not right to do, okay? But again, like I say, there's a lot happening in this world. Let me know what you guys are saying. Like, comment, subscribe. Let people know I'm out there for you guys because I'm always out there for you guys. Whenever you subscribe, hit that little bell so you know I have a video that's posted out there. But I love you guys. Please be safe out there. Make sure you're wearing a mask and everything else on the way. I love all y'all. Peace out. And remember, Black Lives Matter.